Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a little bit different video as I am going to open up and be a bit more vulnerable with you guys. I have to be honest that I'm really nervous making this video and it's something that I have been wanting to do for a while and finally am at the point where I feel comfortable with it. Today we're going to be talking about my own journey with hair loss and if you stick around to the end you're going to see my transformation here. So let's jump into it and let's walk through the journey that I've been on in the hopes that it might help somebody else. First off, let's talk about hair loss in general. Primarily today, we're talking about androgenic alopecia. This is the hormone pattern hair loss that many guys will experience and a small percentage of women will experience. It's estimated that 40% of guys will have visible thinning of their scalp by the age of 35, and this gets higher as men get older. So by the time that men are in their late 50s, it's 65%, and by the time you're to your 70s, it's almost 80% of men will be suffering from hair loss. And so as a society, we overall have been very accepting of hair loss in men, but that doesn't mean that hair loss on an individual level is not um, psychologically distressing or something that people will try to fight. And the hair restoration industry as a whole is a huge market with many types of therapies available, some working better than others. As far as women go, there is a smaller percentage of women that will experience hormone pattern hair loss, but it's still non-trivial. By the age of 40, about 40% 40 of women are noticing thinning of their hair. And it's more distressing for women in general just because of societal norms and things that we have come to accept as the standard. When I was a kid, I noticed that my dad was starting to lose hair when he was in his probably mid-30s. And I had seen my grandfathers and known that between both of my grandfathers and my dad, in the long run, I didn't stand a chance to hold on to my hair. But I always thought that it would not start until I was, you know, maybe in my mid to late 30s, and that's where I am right now. But as I went through medical school, of course, you know, that's a very stressful time. I noticed that my hair was starting to thin probably when I was a third year medical student. I was working long hours in the hospital, getting up early. I was staying late. I was studying, reading late into the night, going through stressful situations, responding to codes in the hospital and trauma calls. And overall, that whole time, plus the two years of classroom work before and having had children in medical school and the sleep sacrifices that go along with that, I found that my hair started thinning quite a bit when I was in my third year of medical school. And I don't know exactly what tipped it off for me first, if it was just that I was noticing increased shedding when I would shampoo my hair, but I decided I wanted to do something about it. So I went on down to the local grocery store, picked up some minoxidil, and minoxidil is one of the most common over-the-counter treatments to battle hair loss. Minoxidil was initially developed as a blood pressure medication because it dilates the blood vessels and it can help to drop the blood pressure. Overall, it wasn't, for many reasons, a great blood pressure medication uh, because of how dramatic the result was, but they found that guys in the trial had increased hair growth, and then it was formulated into a topical medication and eventually went over the counter. So minoxidil is very commonly used and seems to work most effectively on the crown of the scalp, not so much on the frontal part of the scalp. I was really good about using minoxidil for a while, but eventually fell off the bandwagon. It was greasy. It didn't work very well from a cosmetic standpoint and how often you wash your hair and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it left yellow stains on the pillow and things when you would use it at night. So eventually, after a couple of months, I just didn't use it that much. Um, and also, I was very busy with medical school. And my hair loss wasn't severe at that point, so I just kind of forgot about it, ignored it, went through, finished medical school, got into residency. And it was while I was a resident, I was out at a skin cancer screening event providing uh, skin cancer education. It was summertime. I had sunscreen on, you know, my arms. Um, I had my white coat on, backs of my hands. I had sunscreen. I put sunscreen on my face, but I didn't put sunscreen on the top of my head. I didn't think I needed it because I had hair, but I got a pretty bad sunburn that day. Even just the sunburn made a lot more hair fall out. Thankfully, a lot of that came back. But it was then that I realized that I was getting a lot more thin on the top of my head than I had actually known about. At that time, I tried the minoxidil again, but to be honest, I wasn't really good about using it frequently, and it had the same challenges that I had noticed previously with staining of the pillow, 
and it just it didn't fit well into my daily routine. So I completed my dermatology residency and there I learned how to treat people suffering from hair loss. I learned about all the therapies that I've ended up trying on myself. Once I got into practice as a dermatologist, I started to notice that my hair was continuing to thin. It was very stressful. When I first took my job as a dermatologist, I ended up leaving my first job rather shortly and then starting my own practice because of some personality conflict and um, the work environment wasn't favorable to me. So I went through a lot of stress again in starting up my own practice and I started to notice as the family photos would come back each year that my hair was getting thinner and thinner. I knew that over-the-counter minoxidil wasn't really a great option for me so I started looking into some additional therapies and these are things that I was also using on patients from time to time. The first thing that I used was a compounded medication that had minoxidil in it but it also had finasteride in it. Finasteride is a different medication that helps to block the conversion in the body from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And it's the presence of dihydrotestosterone that causes the hair follicles on the head to miniaturize, to shrink, and then to eventually fall out. So finasteride has proven to be a very effective medication for many men, and I was using it in a topical form. So it was compounded in a liquid that I found to be more cosmetically elegant than using minoxidil foam over the counter. And I was using that for a while, probably two to three months. I was starting to notice improved growth. And then I got allergic to the compound. It just caused a severe rash on my scalp and on my forehead uh, whenever I would put it on, and I'd have to take a couple weeks off and I just hated how itchy I was, so it really wasn't a good option for me. I did work with the pharmacy to reformulate it a couple different times to take out different ingredients, and it didn't matter. I couldn't use it without suffering severe itching for at least two weeks after even a single application. So I no longer had that avenue available to me, and then that is when I tried oral minoxidil. Oral minoxidil is approved as Propecia, for the treatment of male pattern baldness. And it's widely available on the market, it's inexpensive, and it works well for many guys. There are the potential for some side effects from it, and I prescribed it to dozens and dozens of patients, and thankfully not had anybody complain of those side effects. I didn't experience them either, but I was working on some fitness goals at the time, and I was worried that the impact on my hormones would limit the types of fitness goals that I had. And to be honest, again, I wasn't great at taking a pill every day. So because of that, I ended up stopping the um, oral finasteride as well and continued to lose my hair. Now I did have access to a couple other things that can get to be pretty expensive and that's going to be things like PRP injections or other growth factor type preparations that can be injected into the scalp or microneedled into the scalp to help to promote hair growth. I went through several rounds of PRP and then I used another growth factor preparation as well to help stimulate hair growth and I just didn't find a lot of results from it. It was also hard to schedule time in to do that because I'm the one that's doing that for patients and it wasn't a type of procedure that I could do on myself. So I would have to get somebody else to help me with that and that wasn't always easy to schedule. Plus it's not always the most comfortable thing to go through. And I've seen good results with PRP in some patients, but I've seen some patients that just didn't respond very well at all. In general, my experience is that with PRP, the younger you are when you do it, the better results you're likely to get. And you're going to get better results with that when you combine it with other therapies, like topical minoxidil, topical finasteride, oral finasteride, and then sometimes other things. So the more things that you can do to combat hair loss, the better results that you're likely to have. And I'd already kind of exhausted some of those other options, and using PRP alone just didn't give me the results that I was looking for. At that time, I also tried the red light helmets, and that's something that we can talk about more on the channel in the future, but red light therapy is anti-inflammatory. It can help to promote blood flow. It can help to promote hair growth, and there's good evidence from some of these companies that show an improvement in hair growth when using red light therapy. It has to be at a certain wavelength. Laser diodes are better than LED diodes in general. And I tried a couple different companies. I ordered a custom one from Alibaba, and they make a lot of the ones that end up getting on the US market under other names. And I got one from a company here, you know, in the United States. And uh, I didn't find them too difficult to use. You know, they come with a battery pack and you can wear it every other day with the one that I was using. And it worked well. It was like the perfect time to wear on my commute. And, but again, using that by itself was not enough to preserve the hair 
on the top of my head. For all of these things that I've tried, I still recommend them to patients, but I try to be very, very straightforward about the types of results they may or may not expect. There's definitely not a guarantee when pursuing any of these treatments to try to stop or to reverse male pattern baldness. It was around this time that I started to get a lot more active on social media, and I was creating videos daily to go on TikTok. I hadn't yet started YouTube, but with all of that, I started to become a lot more self-conscious about seeing the thinning hair on the top of my head and at the frontal hairline. I think anybody that has suffered from hair loss has been at that point where they saw the top of their head in a video or in a picture and didn't realize how bad it really was and they realized they had to do something. At that point, I'd already tried almost every method that I could think of, and so I found myself one day standing in front of the mirror, clippers in hand, ready to shave my head. As I was sitting there thinking about the you know commitment that it would take, because once you do it, it was something that I knew I would wanna keep up with, um, and my wife came in, she's like, well, what are you doing? This is ridiculous, it's not that bad. You know, you need to just calm down a little bit and uh, just forget about it. And so that's what I did for a little bit, and I continued to be active on social media, all the while making a conscious effort not to show the top of my head because it made me self-conscious, even though, thankfully, nobody else was making comments. I have had a really great experience on social media with people being very kind and giving lots of great feedback on the content that I'm putting out there. So this was largely something that I was projecting onto myself that I was self-conscious about. And that is something that I have seen working with patients, whether it's for hair loss, whether it's for cosmetic mole removal, Botox, fillers, is that oftentimes we're much harder on our own selves than anybody else is externally, whether it's our friend groups, whether it's even on social media, which can sometimes be mean, or our family. And so I had projected that on me and probably made it more of a problem than it really was at the time. I also work with a lot of patients who make the decision to do cosmetic treatments for themselves to improve or to change their appearance. And I perform fillers and Botox. I do PRP, I do cosmetic mold removal. And oftentimes these patients are coming in and they want to make a change. And I work with them to make sure that it's a subtle change that increases their confidence, that improves their self perception and gives them a better outlook as they go back out into the workforce or to school or whatever it is that they're doing. And so I understand pretty well from a patient perspective that psychological aspect of wanting to make a change and I don't feel that anybody who goes through a cosmetic treatment owes an explanation to anybody else about why they want to do it. So if you're going through any type of cosmetic treatment, whether it's um, you know rhinoplasty, a nose job, whether it's you know breast augmentation, whether it's filler, whether it's Botox, cosmetic mole removal, or anything, it's completely okay to do that for yourself without having to owe an explanation to anybody. And thankfully, we have lots of safe ways to do all of those things in today's world. It was around that time on TikTok that I came across an account that was doing hair restoration using a hair system. I'd never seen anything like like that before. I had only been familiar with toupees back, you know, 20, 30 years ago that generally didn't look pretty good because if you could tell that they were wearing something like that, it usually wasn't done good. Now, maybe there were great systems around back then, but uh, you wouldn't know it and that's what would make them great. But I saw on TikTok through uh, an account of somebody who has now become a friend that they were doing these hair systems and I thought that they looked great. And I saw the confidence change that the client would go through as they went from you know, having this balding appearance to having a full head of hair. And I reached out to the person, we became friends. I got a referral to somebody in my area and I decided to go and try a hair system. The process of going and getting a hair system starts with a consultation with the stylist. They wanna make sure that you are a good candidate for it, that you are committed to the process. Because one, it can be expensive. It does take visits that have to happen every month. You have to go back and get it you know, cut back in. So I went in, I had a consultation and decided that I would go through with it. And so the day of my appointment came, I went in and at that point, the stylist would shave the top of your head, the area that was thinning, and just remove all of the hair from that area. When I saw that in the mirror for the first time, I was mortified. I did not want to look like that person who had just all that hair around the side and nothing on top. And I knew that's the direction that I was going in. And so at that point, they put on the um, hair piece and they make sure that it fits well within the shape of the area that they have shaved off of your scalp. And then they cut it, they style it, it's color matched, all of that stuff. And then it becomes, you know, something that you wear for about a month before they will take it off, 
shampoo your hair, cut all of your normal hair, and then reapply it. And I went through this process for about the last year. At first, I was thrilled with it. I loved the way that it made me look. I had the thickest hair that I'd had in years, something that I hadn't enjoyed since before I went to medical school. And I liked the way that it made me look. I liked the improved confidence that it gave me when I was on camera. And everything seemed to be going great for quite a while. However, after about six months, something started to happen. The hair pieces that I had used, the company that they were coming from had changed the manufacturer and they were made to a poor quality and they started to deteriorate. They weren't holding hair. And I thought I was psychologically <laughs> distressed when I was losing my own hair. But when I started losing hair that I'd paid for, I was mortified. One, because it was expensive and I didn't want to lose it. And two, because I was even more worried that people would notice. Now, I don't think a lot of people ever did notice. My coworkers knew what I had done. My family knew what I had done. And a few people online were able to tell. And I talked to them in the you know personal direct messages about it uh, and made some recommendations. But overall, I was really happy until I started noticing that. So I talked to my stylist. We went through different companies. Some of them, I didn't like the you know way that they were uh, put together. You know, there's different ways that they can put together a hairpiece on the base and they didn't feel as comfortable. Some of them made me very itchy. And overall, I struggled for two to three months um, with that. Now, after that point, I again realized that I wasn't as confident as I wanted to be. You know, I went into the hair system to help boost my confidence because I was thinking about the hair on a daily basis and the way that it looked. I was taking, you know, time to try to style my hair in such a way to make it look acceptable on camera. And I find that I was right back at that point. So no longer was I necessarily getting the benefits from the hair system that I had gotten into it for because I was always worried about how it would look, if it was losing too much hair, if it was bonded properly. And I noticed that I sometimes limited my activity. Even though when you have a hair system, generally you can do just about anything you would want, um, I was cautious not to go swimming with it. And that was something that I wanted to do with my kids. You know, when we would go to the water park, I was careful about what water slides I would go down. Um, you know, if I'm roughhousing with my kids, playing around on the floor, I had to be careful. Not because I was really thought it would come off, but I was, you know, that was in the back of my mind. And so when I realized it was limiting my activity, it was not making, you know, my confidence better. And I was not, you know, happy and having as positive an outlook. I realized it probably wasn't worth it for me to continue on. I went back and I thought about all the conversations that I've had with patients about the decision to do cosmetic treatments on themselves. And I think that it's wonderful when anybody makes that decision. And it's also wonderful when people decide not to make that decision, that they decide that going in the all natural way is right for them. Or maybe they've done filler for a while and they decide that no longer are they going to do it. They're going to accept and age gracefully. So really I got to the point where I decided that I was going to stop using the hair system uh, because of the limitations, because it was no longer giving me the confidence that I thought that um, you know it would when I got into it. And so at this point, when you're watching the video, I've made the decision that I'm going to remove the hair piece and that I'm going to start shaving my head. And this gives me a lot of anxiety just to talk about it because it's going to be a big change. And uh, you know, I'm worried about the perception on social media, um, even though I have an incredibly supportive um, you know group of followers. Uh, my kids are mortified about it. They don't want big change. And um, so it's something that uh, I'm looking forward to. And I want you guys to come with me on that journey. And the reason is that there's a lot of people I know that have reached out to me in direct messages who have been very curious about my own journey with hair loss um, and how my hair got so much thicker. And again, I didn't feel like I owed an explanation to anybody about that. Just like I don't you know, think patients need to go around and tell everybody that they had filler, for example, or Botox or something else. So, um, but now that I'm going back in the other direction, I did want to address it with everybody. So this is the journey that I'm on. This is the personal struggle that I've had. And I know that many other people based on the statistics struggle with it and based on direct messages struggle with it. And so because of that, I want to you know, put myself out there and hope that it gives somebody else the confidence to accept where they're at. If you want to do any of the treatments that I've done in the past, I think it's wonderful. I hope they work well for you if you go down that path. But I know that they won't work for everybody. And if you want to have a hair system or you have a hair system, I think that's wonderful. I think you should go through with it. And I think that there's some value in the fact that I went through all of these things 
and realized that they just didn't work for me and that they didn't provide me with the result that I was looking for in the end. That result primarily is improved confidence, you know, in my personal life and on camera. Because I have essentially tried and failed just about everything short of a hair transplant, I feel a lot more comfortable taking that leap and going ahead and removing the hairpiece and shaving the head. So without waiting any longer, let's jump into that portion of it and then we're gonna regroup afterwards kind of to talk about my final thoughts about the whole thing. Okay, well, it is time. Um, not terribly excited about this. I know I've been thinking about it for a long time. But now that it's here, it's certainly a moment of hesitation. <clears throat> but as I've looked back over kind of, you know, the last few months, pictures, videos and everything, um, I'm, I'm ready to do it, but I haven't shaved my head since I was a kid. So I don't really know what I'm gonna look like. And um, so I'm apprehensive a little bit and I'm doing this right before I go on a trip so that I'll have, um, I'll come back and everybody that I work with, everything will be different. A couple of them know that I'm going to do it, but I certainly feel some anxiety about it. I would love to be able to continue to, you know, have hair, but I don't really have hair. So um, it's time to make a change that's going to free me up, improve my lifestyle, just give me more freedom and flexibility to do whatever I want, whatever I want. So we're going to remove the hairpiece and then I'm going to shampoo and get uh, the adhesive off and then uh, we'll trim up my natural hair that's left on the sides and uh, then go ahead and give everything a nice shave. So let's get started. Okay, I think I've got everything now. <clears throat> For the next part, I'm going to start by trying to use an electric trimmer. Now, I don't know if it was just the uh, social media company spying on me, but I started seeing ads for all these four and five head uh, electric shavers and they are pretty expensive and so I did what I usually do in that kind of situation. I went to Alibaba, I found basically the same thing for $13 and then you pay twice as much for shipping but ends up being about half the cost and so I picked up this one here, it's a five head. I don't know if it's going to be any good or not but uh, we're going to try that out. If not, I've got my shaving cream and a razor here as a backup. So we're gonna try it out. It's got 90 minute battery life. So far, I think it's doing okay. So a few initial observations. The razor takes a lot of passes, that electric razor. I'm not sure it's the most efficient way to go. Um, I'll probably try it a few more times, but I may end up just going with the straight razor because it's taking lots and lots of passes in order to get it. Also, I've noticed that with wearing the hairpiece, of course, I wasn't shampooing my hair at the frequency that I was before. So my hair care practices and the skin health of my scalp was definitely impacted by that. Um, my scalp is very dry. So as I shave, I'm getting a lot of flakes. And so I'm gonna have to do you know, moisturizing and of course, lots of sunscreen now but I didn't realize how dry my scalp was underneath everything. You know, you had the adhesive on, but then even stuff around the sides, it was my own natural hair. I would rinse, but I wasn't shampooing, you know, but once a week or so. And uh, that definitely made my scalp more dry, just the way that I was taking care of things. So I'm gonna rinse all this off and probably um, maybe make another pass with a razor, like a shaving cream and a handheld razor. And then we'll be pretty much done. Okay, so a little trim now, especially around the sides, which I don't feel like I got as good. It's a five blade razor. I don't think you need five blades, it's just what I have on hand. And I don't wanna shave against the grain much, especially since this is my first time, because I don't wanna get ingrown hairs. So just one pass hopefully with the grain in most areas. And there we are. So definitely pale on top. Got to protect the skin, be using lots of sunscreen. No doubt it'll pick up a little bit of color, but I have to be careful with it. Um, happy with things so far. I mean, no more bad hair days. It's going to be still moments of anxiety, I'm sure, when I meet people that are not expecting to see a change in everything. So, but I'm happy that I'm taking this step. It's definitely the right step for me. Um, I've tried everything and uh, I think that helped me get to a place where I can now accept that this will be my new normal and I'm okay with that. 
there's other things that I can do um, that are going to give me more value than trying to pretend like I have hair. So I better get used to it. And uh, the people around me are going to have to get used to it. Uh, social media, that's going to be a different story. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I think that I've got good followers. They'll be uh, supportive and understanding because everybody has their own struggles. And one of mine happens to be hair loss. So here's where I am. This is the authentic me. And uh, hopefully it helps somebody else that might also be struggling with anything like that to just accept what you have and uh, move on and focus on other things in your life rather than something that you might not have any control over. Okay, so here we are now. I'm not at my usual recording location. I'm out attending a conference at Hawaii, and this was kind of the first public appearance that I had where I was meeting people that knew me before, and I definitely caught a few people off guard, but I'm so happy that I went ahead and made the decision to get rid of the hairpiece and to shave my hair. It's freeing, it's comfortable, and it just gives me more flexibility in you know day-to-day -day life and activities where I don't have to worry about anything else. Um, shaving my head now i've done it a couple times and you can see like things uh, look pretty good i think um you can see the back you can see the front um you know i hadn't shaved my head since i was a kid and so i you know wanted to make sure that i had a good head shape for it and everything but i'm really happy with that decision so far when we look at ourselves when we judge ourselves we're always our own worst critic and as I was starting to lose my hair I definitely became more self-conscious than I needed to be and I went to great lengths to try to preserve my hair and we talked about that at the beginning of the video um, this is a decision that I was thinking about making a couple of years ago and I'm glad that I didn't at that time I think if I had at that time I probably would be wondering you know should I have done this should I have done that should I have tried all these different things um, I went ahead and did all those different things and, and just didn't get the results or the maintenance and upkeep wasn't necessarily worth it for my active lifestyle. And so now that I got through all of that, I am really comfortable moving forward in this direction. It's a big change and it's going to take some getting used to for myself. Every time I look in the mirror, it catches me off guard like, oh yeah, you don't have hair anymore. And every time I meet somebody that doesn't know about it yet and that has seen me before, uh, it catches them off guard too. And sometimes people don't know, should I say something? Should I not say something? Um, and it's probably different from person to person. But for me, I'm totally comfortable if somebody wanted to ask like, hey, <laughs> where's all your hair? Um, I work with many patients on cosmetic concerns and there's just as many patients that I talk out of doing something as I talk into doing something. So sometimes a patient may come to me and they want filler and I don't think filler is a good option for them or uh, they want to do, you know, cosmetic mole removal, but it's a very, you know, small, very normal looking mole. And we tend to judge ourselves harshly and be very critical of our own appearance. And that's what I was going through with my hair. And it took time before I just got comfortable with the fact that it's okay to not have hair. It's okay to have hair. I don't want to judge anybody that wants to do everything humanly possible to keep their hair, to have hair transplants or to wear a hair piece. Um, you know, I could go back to wearing the hair piece if I want you know, that appearance. And I don't think that I'd have any qualms about that. But right now with my you know, lifestyle, with the things that I want to pursue, um, activity levels, just playing with my kids, it's the right decision for me not to do it. And I may get, you know, maybe some mean comments or something online because that's just sometimes the way social media works. But I'm grateful for a group of really supportive followers and subscribers who I want to give back to you as much as you give me in positive support and encouragement by just creating a community and an environment of support and of love where everybody helps each other be their best selves, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. So this is where I'm at with my hair journey. I'm ready to just be done with it and just live a more free, relaxed, active lifestyle. And uh, so we're gonna kind of continue on from this point. I hope that um, everybody likes it. And if you don't, that's okay too, because I didn't do it for anybody else. I did it for me. And that's what I've done every step of the way is I really did it for me. Um, and there were definitely times where I was listening to voices that were critical, but it was still coming from within because uh, I really didn't get a lot of comments from other people about thinning hair or anything like that. So um, I'm really happy with this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm sure that I'm going to have some follow-up videos and other things to answer your questions. 
I do have all of the footage of the appointment when I got the hair piece and got haircuts and all of that kind of stuff. It's all saved in my archives and I'm debating on releasing that. Let me know if you guys would like to see that kind of stuff. And if um, you have other questions, just let me know. And I'll be back with uh, a couple other videos that I've already recorded back from when I had hair. So don't be caught off guard if the next video released has hair in it because I'm working through a few drafts and things. But I wanted to get this out kind of ahead of any other social media posts so that um, everybody would kind of know what's going on. I'd have a place where I could just explain everything before I post it on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that. So this is the first piece of content going up and uh, then everything else is gonna point to this YouTube video. So I appreciate your support and your encouragement um, of this channel and of the education that I'm trying to do. And I'm gonna keep coming back and being here for you guys and answering your questions about anything related to your health in general and especially the health of your skin, hair, and nails. Have a great day.